In this video, we're going to run through setting up Serbos using AWS Cognito for authentication in a Python Fast API application. For the purposes of this demo, we'll assume you have an AWS account configured with access and secret keys to allow programmatic access to your account. And we'll also assume that you have Docker running locally as we'll need it to run an instance of the Serbos PDP. The code can be found on GitHub in our repository at serbos slash python cognito servos. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and clone the repository. And then I'm going to install the dependencies as it will take a bit of time and get it out of the way. Now, before we get started, we'll need to create a Cognito user pool for our application to interact with. So we'll do this now via the AWS console. We'll define a simple pool by passing some of the more complex configuration that you'd likely opt for in a product production scenario, just for the purposes of this demo. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So I'll run through the simplest implementation. I'm going to choose email for the pool sign-in options. I'll stick with the Cognito defaults for the password. I'll disable multi-factor authentication, keep the rest the same. Sign up experience, I'll keep the same. I'll choose Cognito to deliver email, even though this is irrelevant for my demo as I'll be creating users and overriding passwords manually. However, just in case, I'll keep the rest the same. I'm going to call the pool Serbos Demo, and I'll copy that. I'm going to enable the hosted UI, and then for the domain, I'm going to also call it Serbos Demo. This is the requirement of our demo code. For the app client, I'm going to give it a name. This could be anything. Uh, Serbos Demo app client. I'm not going to bother generating a secret. For the callback URL, it would be HTTP localhost 8000, same as our web app, slash callback. And then in the advanced app client settings, I'm going to scroll to the bottom, add a sign up URL, also HTTP localhost itself. Okay, next. Review everything. I'm confident it's all correct, so I'm going to go ahead and create the user pool. Now, before we go any further in the pool config, if I refer back to the code, if we zoom in here, within the repository, within the servos slash policies directory, we've defined a policy for a resource type contact. Within here, you can see, if I just minimize that, you see there's, we've defined two roles here. We have an admin role, and we've got a user role. We allow each of them to read and create any contacts. For the admin, we allow them to update and delete any contacts. And separately for the user, we allow them to update and delete, providing they own that particular resource. So in, to map these, policy roles in Serbos to the roles within our Cognito user pool. I'm going to go ahead and create some basic groups. So let's go back to here. I'm going to click on groups. I'm going to create a group. Call it admin. Create that. And another one. User. And create that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add some users to my pool. So I'm going to do this programmatically just via the admin CLI interface. So the first thing we need to do is retrieve the user pool ID. So if I go back to the UI again, we find that just here. So I'll grab that, and then just copy here for convenience, and then I'm going to copy that into these two commands. Just for thoroughness, I'll also update this one at the top here because we'll need that in a minute. Now I'll grab this, run it. So this is creating a user, Sam plus user, and I'm going to 
going to repeat that for some plus admin. You should probably see where this is going. The other thing I need to do is override the password because I currently have randomly generated passwords. So I'll copy this. This is for some plus user, changing it to a common password. And likewise for admin. There we go. So now if we go back to the console, we're going to refresh this. And just navigate to the users tab once it reloads here. And there we have it, we have our two users. The next thing to do is to add these to our respective groups. So if I select this one, Sam plus admin, as you can probably guess, oops, no, not that one. They're going to be added to the admin group. And likewise, for the user, Sam plus user, user, we'll add it to the user group. As there we are. Now, back to our console, our terminal, sorry. Let's close this. So, now we've installed the dependencies. I'll open another, another pane there. Let's load up Servos and CV, CD sorry, to Servos, and I'm going to run the startup script. Got up running, let's do. Run that. And then in our application pane, I'm going to set some environment variables. So if we refer back to the main module, here you'll see some explicitly required environment variables. So any explicit calls to os.environ, namely for AWS default region, for cognito client ID, and for pool ID. We need to set those, so I've got these written down here. We've already overridden the pool ID, so I need to retrieve the client ID. So back to the console. Uh, click here. I'm going to navigate to the app integration tab, scroll to the bottom, and we can retrieve the ID from there. And just plug that in. There we are. Copy that. Click here. And set those. Okay, just verify they've been set correctly. They have. Now we're going to go ahead and start this. Application locally, there we are. So that's now running the, or about to run the app, the app locally. So we'll give that a minute just to fire up. There we go, the app is now running. So we can now access this at localhost on port 8000. There we are. I'm going to just quickly using one of the users we've created, samplus user at servos.dev. Add our password, Press enter, and there we have it, the UI is loading. Um, before we dig into what this is showing, I'm going to jump back to the code and we can talk about this. Okay, so, first things first, when we logged in then, we the logic handling it was this particular route here. So we have this login function. So what this does is it retrieves the form data via this fast API provided middleware. So within form data we have, as you can see, the username and the password. It uses this to populate a cognito object and then authenticate it. And then on success, we retrieve the access token, which is populated via this response. So this is a third party library we're using. Uh, passes it to this get credentials from token function, uh, explicitly passes in, as you can see, it's explicitly passing, passing in the access token, so we don't rely on this depends function, which is something we'll come to in a minute. So it passes in, we generate some credentials via a bunch of helper functions, and then pass it through, sorry, retrieve it, and then set it in the session, the local session, which is also utilizing some middleware provided by fast API indirectly. So this redirect then passes us down to this user endpoint here. So what this accepts is the request object and also this credentials variable is generated via this dependable which is a fast API middleware wrapper which basically accepts the same arguments as the path operation function and returns the credentials for use within that function. So this particular function is get user from session. So we've stored the 
credentials within the session in that previous function we saw, so if we just done tip in here, it is effectively just retrieving those credentials. If it's unsuccessful in doing so, it will redirect back to the index page. Otherwise, it will generate the credentials from the um, from fits using this credentials class here, which is a Python data class, and then returns that here. You can see here that we retrieve the claims from the credentials, and from within those claims, we can retrieve the user ID and the roles. So this was um, returned from within the claims of the access token from Cognito. We then use this user ID and the roles to populate, or to, sorry, to create this principal object. And then down below, we define a set of resources within this resource list class here. Ordinarily, this list of resources would be built via a call to your data store, but we are manually constructing here for the purposes of this demo. So in this first resource here, you can see that we set the owner attribute to be the user ID, which matches that of the principal. And in the second one, we generate or just give pass some other random ID to demonstrate that this resource is not owned by the principal. Now, if we refer back to the UI, we can see how this particular user, Samplus user, who was a member of the user group rather than the admin group in for the, for the user pool, has access to read, update, and delete its own resource, their own resource. However, they only have access to read this other resource and not update and delete it. Now, if I log out and log in as the admin user, As you can guess, the admin user has access to their own resource, but also has full access to the resource owned by the other party. We also provide the option to enable the hosted UI. To do that, we set some environment variables and we reload it. So the environment variables required are as follows. Let me just close this down. Right here. So we need to set AWS Cognito pool name which matches the pool name we defined in the console. We define the callback URL, again defined in the console, and also the logout URL. So let's grab those, set those, make sure that we set, there we go. Let's reload the application. Now that's reloaded, we'll go back to the UI, refresh it, and we have the option to go to the Cognito login. Now if we click here, it takes us through to the host UI. And as before, we can log in with one of our users. And there we are. So when we log in via the hosted UI, AWS will call our callback function here with a code in the payload. So we retrieve that code and we use it to exchange for a token via the AWS OAuth2 tokens endpoint. So we generate the URL, uh, then make a request, the code is passed as query string parameters, we make the request and then we retrieve the tokens. And as before, we retrieve the credentials from the access token and store it in the session. Now, as you've seen through this demo, we've opted to use session cookies via the provided middleware. Under production scenarios, you might opt to maintain a stateless API. On login, you would return the access token to the client rather than storing the session locally. If we scroll to the bottom of this module, I've defined a protected endpoint, slash protected, which relies on the same access token to be passed within the authorization header of type bearer with each request. We use the same get credentials from token function, but this time as a dependable, to retrieve the to, um, to retrieve the credentials for each. And that's it. The docs can be found in the readme, in the repo, or at docs.servos.dev. Thanks for watching.